many videos have been recorded of the Tucson Gem Shows, the 40-something gem shows that fill the city of Tucson, Arizona every year during January and February, some lasting for multiple weeks and featuring hundreds of vendors. But this video is going to highlight the natural jade sellers that you can shop from when you visit the Tucson Gem Shows. My husband, Hunter, and I make the trek to Tucson every year for professional buying, networking, and exhibiting. As jade professionals, we have the privilege of connecting with some of the most talented and knowledgeable jade experts in the industry. Here is a little glimpse into the world of jade in the USA. As soon as we got into town on Thursday, our first stop was visiting our friend Shane Zach of Freshwater Jade at the Kino Gem and Mineral Show. We love Kino so much that we usually visit it twice while we're in Tucson. The event is held at the Kino Sports Complex and is known as the best show for rough gemstones. Shane is a jade carver and rough supplier based in Wisconsin. He's known for his Maori-inspired carved pendants, one-of-a-kind jade earrings, and rough specimens from Indonesia, Wyoming, Russia, Guatemala, and more. We love seeing the different materials side by side. Shane and I collaborated on a video recently where we discussed rough jade identification, which you should definitely check out after you're done watching this video, link below. You know, I work with all kinds of different types and varieties of jades from all over the place. And people come to my booth and they're like, I had no idea jade came in this many colors. Like, and I've got one big bright green one, of course, up front, because everyone likes to see the bright green. And they're like, this is what I thought jade looked like. And I'm like, yeah, I know, isn't it cool? Like, you know, here's this like caramel brown and this like white with all these like weird black inclusions. And like, you've got all these jades that people are just like, not used to seeing because it's not always as common to see them. And it, you know, I think, I think that's a great like learning experience for a lot of people to see that and just be like, wow, this is, you have so many colors here. When I went back to the show on Saturday, I couldn't help but buy a pair of Siberian nephrite jade earrings, which I absolutely love. The next day, we went to the 22nd Street Mineral, Fossil, Gem, and Jewelry Show. It's a huge event created by the same people who do the Denver Gem Show. It's free admission and one of the big three shows available to the public. We had to pay $10 for parking, but it was totally worth it. We could have spent an entire day there at least. All three of the vendors we needed to see were in the showcase tent at the south end. Mark Allen had some particularly interesting black omphasite jade and a variety of jade and mossitsit rough available. Next, we visited our friend Luke Miller from Yoxtoon. Luke sells Guatemalan jadeite jade jewelry as well as high quality Guatemalan jadeite jade rough. My husband Hunter spent a long time examining the rough and ultimately bought some specimens for cutting. Luke's Guatemalan jadeite comes in a variety of colors, such as blue, lavender or lilac, and even black. Even though these colors are available from Burma as well, there is something distinctive about the Guatemalan rough that sets it apart. The Guatemalan black jade has an interesting look to it as well. Look at this pre-Columbian style mask inspired by the work of the Teotihuacan and the Maya. The matte finish makes it look extra touchable. Our next stop was Jade West, who you may know as the Canada-based company behind jademine.com. We shopped here too and ended up with some really cool finds, which you can see in our Tucson Jade Hall video. I'll include the link in the description. 
Jade West is owned by Kirk Makepeace, one of the leading jade experts in our industry who was recently published in Lotus Gemology's book, Jade, A Gemologist's Guide. Jade West operates multiple mines in British Columbia and is well known for polar jade and some of the finest nephrite jade coming out of Canada. You can actually learn more about Canadian jade mining in our interview with Nikki and Matt from Jade West, which I'll also include in this video description. I got this at the Jade West booth this year. I got this at the Jade West booth last year. Somehow, I had never been to the Red Lion in Gem and Mineral show before. In fact, I'm not sure I had even heard of it, even though it's a short walk from the Pueblo show where we go every year. Luckily, I had seen on Mayan Mountain's Instagram page that he was going to be there. I am so glad I was able to meet Mayan Mountain's own Jesse Stout for the first time in real life human person. Hey everyone. I'm Jesse Stout. I am the owner of Mayan Mountain, and we specialize in Guatemalan jadeite. I want to show you guys uh, what we have here. Some of our best sellers is this blue jade here. Let's hold up some of these pieces here. You can see the light behind. This blue green is called Princesa. You can tell Princesa jade by its snowy spots there. And it's really, it's really varied. You get a lot of different textures here in this blue. Like you get some like stripes and patterns and stuff. I like to use those in my cabochons and my work. You literally never know what you're gonna come across. Like a piece like this, you know? It's just, it has two different colors in it, right down the middle. Oh, here's a neat piece. This has more snow than I've ever seen. That's gorgeous. In, 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 a, in a princess of jade. Yeah, this stuff is just really, really nice. Wow, look at that translucency. So this is the stuff they call yellow. They call it ice, or some people call it luna, but it tends to have veins of imperial green in it. And uh, if y'all don't know, imperial is the color of kings and shamans, royalty. It is literally the rarest and most um, valuable color in the world. Then you have you have call, you call them the common colors. There's nothing that nothing really common about jade, but you have colors like black here, many different shades of green. This is called a manzana green here. Sometimes you get really interesting patterns in this. This is called, I call this a forest mint. So I lived in Central America for eight years. And when I was there, I was living and working with the Mayan people. And now that I'm here, back in the United States, I still work with the same jade carvers that make all these things. And I can sell even more product. I can help them out every month. We sell, we send thousands of dollars to Central America every month. And uh, it's corn. <laughs> corn! <laughs> Thanks, kid. This is all 925 silver. We have solid bands here, like I wear on my thumb. That's gorgeous. That's our Great Princessa texture. Blue Jade. A 10 millimeter bead. This is something my dad and I like to make these thin cut earrings. That $20 price point is popular in people's shops. Yeah. So what we have here are these, we call them the simple necklaces. They're just random shapes like this. Some are faceted, some aren't, but these retail for $20, $24. This is the star of the show here. Wow. There has never been a jade carving of an alien head like this made before. Who carved this? My friend. Jose in Mexico. His name is New Olmec Style. This started off as a 600 pound boulder that Bob Carmen and I imported several years ago. And we took it to Gold Hill in Colorado to Roger Kirkbaum, who mines BC Jade. He has a 36 inch drop saw. I mean, the blade is huge. So we spent three days cutting the 600 pound stone down into slabs. We found some pictures and uh, we settled on a design and he spent uh, a month carving this. 
Customers and professionals alike travel across the country and even the world to visit the Tucson Gem Shows every winter. But our shared love of gemstones and minerals is year-round. Lux Rocks can send a little bit of Tucson to you every month with their three and six month crystal subscription boxes starting at $95 per month. That's less than a bouquet of roses or a fancy dinner. And the museum quality mineral specimens you, your client, or your loved ones receive in a padded box with the Lucite stand will last way longer than those things. You can even forward your subscription on a particular month to someone else. So you can have gift giving covered year round. Be sure to check out the links in our description after the video is over. We didn't get a lot of footage of it, but the rest of the Red Lion Inn show was really great too, so you guys should definitely check it out next time you're in Tucson. After the Red Lion Inn, we went to the Miners Co-op. I hadn't been to that one before either, ashamedly. Even though it was a little hard to route to on Apple Maps, we made it there and ended up being blown away by the jade sellers we found. We met Tom Payne first, who was selling a huge variety of nephrite jade stones. He told us amazing stories and showed us an incredible specimen of quartz in jade. The thing with the jade is when it wells up, it comes in different viscosities. So when it's going up and filling the voids that are available, some of the voids are lined with quartz crystals, little quartz crystals or big quartz crystals. And the viscosity, when it comes through, if it's real light, it's not going to break those crystals off. If it's real heavy, when it comes through, it'll break those crystals off and carry them with it. He also had some carvings of a frog and a pair of matching Kongs from the Han Dynasty, which is one of Hunter's favorite historical periods to study, so he was freaking out a little bit. Even jade collectors haven't seen. And I think that that was that the, all these voids are from calcite. Where is this mine? Brazil. After meeting Tom, we stumbled upon Wayne Holland selling nephrite jade from Nevada. Yes, there really is nephrite jade in Nevada. We actually had not heard of it until we saw it for the first time. I'm going to include some links to a couple of really fascinating articles on this material in the video description. Some of this jade even has chatoyancy, or the cat's eye effect, which is super cool. Black like jade with feldspar. And that's the polish you get out of that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's what a cool that. piece. Are you yeah. still finding specimens with magnetite in them? Yes, yeah, magnetite. Wow. Magnetite. I thought it only came from California. Oh, that must be a rumor. Yeah. California, there's a lot of rumors going on in California. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got the seams of the common variety jade, and then the seams right here of the crystals that came in and filled up. It's the same crystals that are on this, on these. It's a ten like ten like crystals that make up jade. And then we didn't have much time to chat, but there was also a Guatemalan jadeite jade seller at Miners Co-op too, and it looked like he had some really neat stuff. Next Tucson Gem Show, we're definitely going to allot more time to look at their booth. The first day that we visited Kino was on Thursday, and our second visit was on Saturday. It was way busier on Saturday, but definitely worth the walk from the parking lot. We're at Kino, and we're on a very long trek from the parking lot. I think we've been walking for like three minutes. Do not skip Kino, whatever you do. We, of course, visited Shane before we checked out Bennett Gems, who had Jade Ruff and a variety of Jade bracelets. And then we met Wyoming Jade expert Bob Carmen at the Covington booth in the big tent close to the parking lot. If you enter Kino through the front main entrance, 
You'll go all the way through the main building until you get outside again and then visit the tent on the far left. Do not skip this booth. The earrings, the rough material, everything was amazing, and Bob was so kind to show us a variety of Wyoming nephrite jade. He even had some Wyoming black jade rough, which is considered some of the finest black jade available. Our final destination was one of my favorite shows, the Pueblo Gem and Mineral Show, where we met David Clayton of jadecarver.com in room 122 and saw his incredible specimens of Siberian white nephrite jade. After we left there, we found my friend Madison in the court pavilion at the Rockstock booth with Yvonne, and she showed us their fabulous pieces of natural jadeite jade jewelry. In the description, I'm also including a list of the 12 jade dealers we met at the Tucson Gem Shows so that you can go on a jade crawl yourself the next time you visit. Were there any dealers we didn't see? Let us know in the comments so we can check them out next year. And have you bought from any of these sellers before? Tell us all about it. We look forward to hearing from all of you.